it's really, really, really important to advertise, yes, that stuff that they have, that products that they have. And as they make an ad, ad attractive, the company needs to keep in mind two groups of customers. Two groups of customers or two groups of people. And these two groups are spectators and what? Participants, yes. And participants are the ones who use the inventory and equipment for active, for physical activities in sport. They value effectiveness, yes, simpleness in usage in the product they buy. They understand that that product is really important for their progress, yes? They are using that product. And for, uh, if you would like to advertise and sell something for them, you need to use special words, effective, progress, yes? And all of that is, um, present <laughs> in advertising uh, in some videos or maybe banners and but who who are the spectators who are the spectators mostly these people are fans who support a sport yes yeah they buy all kind of sports stuff that are used by fans by fans However, their difference, their difference is that they do not actively using sporting goods. And this is a problem for product, for companies, yes? How to sell, how to sell this sport product for these people? Okay, I got t-shirt but I never use it. Just maybe one time per week when I need to watch my next game that I like, yes? I do not use it every day. And when companies sell their goods, they understand that the problem with spectator is that they do not use the same equipment that the active participants use. So makers or marketers need to come up with goods that entertain the fans. The most important aspect of spectators' product must be fun. Without fun, you will never buy it. It's reason why they use that as a fun stuff. They, that is why they are, they are um, pre, um, yes, fun games, fun closing videos. We have some fun um, sectors on a stadium, yes? Everything just for what? To, get, to have, to enjoy the game, yes? To be, to be part through that, looks like. And spectators must feel that they are involved in the sport. However, such participation is just a visual participation. This does not actually affect the result of the game. How you can affect the result of the game? Nothing. You cannot change something if CHX has score 28-0 and winners in just in 15 minutes, 22, 20, 27, they lost the game. How you can change something? Or something that will bring, maybe, uh, they do not gain the, any muscles from, from that, yes? They do not practice the discipline, diet, or something. Sick spectators are just visual watching the process. Now I would like to stop with this research, with this article, and I would like to open the Bible. Our Bibles and... My verse or main verse for today is 1 Peter chapter 4. We will read just how many verses? Four verses. No, five, four. Okay, uh, whatever. So, uh, four verses we were, uh, from 7 through 11. And I believe 
we, after some reflection, after some study, we will back to our topic, to our introduction that I made. Okay, please read with me. Can you open First Peter chapter, chapter? We can sing together, but yeah, I, I still need to open my Bible. <laughs> First Peter chapter 4. Okay, verse 7. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks, and one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves, as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that is everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belonging glory and dominion forever and ever. And I would like to start our reflection or our study from verse number, uh, from uh, verse uh, 7, especially from first pa part of that verse. Apostle Peter is summarizing what he is talking or what he has been talking before. Uh, and, but question what I have, what does he talk about? This is really important for context. And what we see in first uh, chapter, uh, in first verse of first chapter, we'll find that he says that Jesus died for just for Peter, yes? yes. No, for all of us. For all of us. Because uh, uh, we are saved, as you saved, as a result of, the, of this grace of God's um, uh, sacrifice. And uh, we have, we live new life, yes? We live new life. And he said, if you have new life, why you need to, to go back? Why you have this temptation back to your previous life, Luke's life? And uh, in verse 6, he, uh, he says interesting verse, and I like that verse. Even if we die, a word is what? Is waiting, waiting for us. Yes, something can happen and we will die, but we have a word. And that award awaits for whom? Just for pastors, for doctors, for all of us who are accepted Jesus Christ's death. Okay, let's go to verse 6 and what we have, uh, verse uh, first part, or oh, 7, excuse me. Verse 7, first part, the end of all things is at hand. Yes, and Apostle P uh, Peter is using interesting word here, Greek word, and gizo, which literally means to come close to or what? Near to, yes? And you have some explanation here from from my dictionary, not my dictionary, what I have. <laughs> so, and he says that the coming of Christ is unchangeable fact. Unchangeable fact. And realization of this must motivate me to live a different life. Jesus Christ will come. 199% more than 100 yes more jesus christ will come but what is my life what is my mentality or philosophy of my life okay an apostle apostle is talking about that we are at the end of this process the following words of peter are the highlighting aspects to which we as a people are waiting of jesus christ must pay attention to. And today, my friends, I would like to point out four lessons, four, four lessons that we get out of this text. And this is very important lessons for those who are expecting for his coming. 
Today I am, not, I, I am not preaching for people. Hey, people, somewhere. I am preaching for you, my friends. And I, we are reading words of Peter. And, the, and we, are, we are people for whom he is preaching. For whom he has these words. For people who are waiting. Right now, we are in this process. We are waiting for Jesus Christ. Okay, first lesson from this, from this part. Uh, seven, uh, verse, verse 7, second part of this verse. I would like to remind you, uh, there, there, therefore be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of what? Of your prayers. Apostle Peter is saying that we must be self-controlled. What does it mean in my personal life? Yes? What does it mean by these words? Interesting, but uh, the root of this word that Peter is using here is the same root for the word of wisdom. Or maybe I can say sem semantic field. On the, they are close on this semantic field to the word of wisdom. He says that we must be wise in our expectations of Jesus Christ. In our expectations. That is a trait of true Christian. Yes or not? We need to be wise or not? Yes. This is a trait of, uh, of the true Christian. And what, who is the wise person, my friends? You know, we have chapel time. Every week we talk with, uh, with our kids from school. How to get wisdom. Real wisdom. Heavenly wisdom. And a wise person sees the thing, things in, her, in the right light. This person is able to understand what is priority and what is secondary. This is really important in my everyday choices to understand what is priority, what is important, and what is secondary. What else? That person, that person, it is a person who is able to tell the difference between enthusiasm and fanaticism. He is able to evaluate this is a wise person. Another word that Peter use, uses here for sober-minded. Yes? And the word he is using here is nepho. This is an interesting word, and uh, he writes that we must be sober, or sober, yes? It means we must preserve our mind's ability for thought. We can list today many factors that affect our ability to think and analyze. There is a book by Ellen G. White, Mind, Character, and Personality. If you will read that book, you will find a lot of good thoughts and a lot of good lessons for your personal life. This book does a good job showing how our thoughts are interwined with our everyday habits. This book does a good, uh, what, what we look at, uh, what we look at, what we watch, yes, every day, Whoa, how, how we sleep, how many, how many we sleep, or uh, our diet, what we are eating, or our words, the music we listen to, and many more activities are affecting our connection that over, um, uh, that affecting our thoughts, yes, and vice versa. Often, my friends, and this is really true, but often we connect alcohol or maybe drugs, with being sober, yes? You are not able to think. Your, your mind is not clear, yes? You cannot uh, have right decision in these conditions. But, my friends, fail to connect that overeating all affects our thoughts, and it hinders the resistance of temptation. You know, Ellen G. White has an interesting quote she says that by mixing sugar, eggs, and milk, we do more harm our body than eating meat. 
And one of the key points that she addresses is the inhabitants of the ability of think. You are not able to think, to have clear mind. It's the reason why you need to avoid these products. And you, you, you can get a lot of more, but my friends, these two acts, aspects, self-controlled and sober mind, must be present in our prayers. And interesting, will God influence me if I am not sober? Or if my beliefs are misbalanced or lopsided? Lop, lop, lop and I like that connection for self-control, sober-minded, with prayer, in our prayers. Because this is a channel through what God is, is talking with you. Through God, is try, he, he wants to, to communicate with you, to give you right thoughts, to give you maybe some inspirations. But if your mind is not clear, how you will be able to accept some important truths for your personal life? If you're overeating, would you like to have some reflection after that? <laughs> you would like to sleep, yes? If you overeat, over you overwork, for example, after 12 hours, I remember when I came to the United States, I worked 12, 14 hours, you know, every day. And Friday, when we had youth meeting, I was not able even talk. I just sat listen and sleep all service whole sabbath service i was not able to be involved because i was over 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 work and problem how god can communicate with me through this condition if i am not able to think second lesson we get in verse uh, 8 apostle peter says what he says. Above all what? Keep loving one another earnestly. And Peter says that love is above all. He is using the word agape, and we like that word. This is the highest virtue, yes, that must be present in our lives, in our serving for one another. As we will see further, uh, such love must be the key aspect in our ministry at church and to each other. And Peter is consecutive in his instruction to the church. Before he is calling to church, or calling a church to ministry, he says, what is the foundation of such ministry? He is using a very interesting word here. What kind of word? Actonis, yes? Actonis, without ceasing. And interesting meaning we have, and this word is usually used when talking about muscle work. For example, when an at athlete yes, is squeezing or straining his muscles. And this means, my friends, that we must what? Strain or train our love. When we are talking about love, what kind of exercise <laughs> we can have. Uh, but you know, this tells us that we that is not just blind love, yes? Or this is a sem sentimental love. This is a real verb. Real actions. You know, for example, we might find someone very adorable and likable. We say, oh, this person is so nice. I like to be with that person. But that sister, no, no, no. I will try to avoid. And that show us that you are not trying to have this exercise for your love, yes? 
And Peter, Peter, Peter is talking about some something different here. True love means straining our inner muscles, muscles of love. It so happens that a person has a talent, yes, talk, preach, but has one problem. He does not like people. We have preachers, we have maybe some deacons or somebody. You have talents. You have educational level, but if you do not like people, what? Paul, Apostle Paul has answer for that, yeah? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Everything is what? Pointless, yes? This is a pointless, pointless talent looks like. A person might be gifted, but not able to love people. And for us, this is a sad for reflection. If I do not love But I have ability. I have talent to serve, uh, to serve for church. What I need to do, my friends? Exercise, yes. You know, if you do not like people, that of course will affect your ministry towards each other. That's why he's starting with love. Apostle Peter starting with love. If we do not love people who surround us, then the first thing we must do is to pray and ask for this gift of love. And that relate, that relate with, with, with our mind, yes? With the fact that we need to be clear. Okay, for, uh, third, third lesson, verse, num, uh, verse 9. Show hospitality. Do we have Ka Katie Sanquist today? She has a lot of thoughts about hospitality, and I, I expected that she will say yes, amen at this moment. But okay, she does not, um, she's not here, and I, I would like to read that again. Show what? Hospitality to one another without, without what? Grumbling, yes, yes, yes. In this verse, Peter is showing how to practice this love he is talking about. And hospitality is taking care of people. And Peter is saying that our hospitality must be without grumbling, murmuring, murmuring and grudging, yes? And sometimes, you know, I heard, sometimes, okay, I will talk about myself. Somebody came to me not in on the right time and say, listen, can you help me? Yes, I am Christian. What I need to do? I, I will help you. But what inside of me? When I came after that to my sister Beverly and says, listen, you know, the person, it was not on time. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I was not ready for that. And it was not for my joy. But what Peter says for us, show hospitality for one another and what? Without what? Grumbling. Yes. When Peter is asking us to show our love, this means that something, sometimes it will be uncomfortable. It will, sometimes it, it is painful and not easy. However, agape love will also not whine or grumble about it. This is a third lesson. And fourth lesson uh, we gain today is the verse 10. Can you read with me verse 10? I know we need extra strength. As each has received a gift. Can you open this verse again? And read with me. As each has received a gift. Use it to serve one another as good stu stewards of God's right grace. In this verse, we find two important moments that we, that we must pay attention. Apostle Peter is saying that our Pastor Alexander has special gift, and this is just for him. He is the most gifted person. It's the reason why he is in Shelton. And some other Christians, no, they don't have any gifts. Everything what they need, just 
Sit and listen. This is what we find? We have in Bible verse? No. We find an interesting idea. He is saying that each one of us has already received a gift. Not just me and the elder Dean. Not just Robert. All of us receive a gift. Greek tense for our Greek tense form is used here is well translated to English tense. And what we have, and I would like to highlight again, we already received the gift. Yes? We will not receive it. We already received gift by our, by our Lord. And what problem do we face in our spiritual life? Not all Christians recognize that they have spiritual gifts. We don't even think about them or anal analyze them, and we might not even see the ne ne necessity of thinking about these gifts. As a result, when we hear a call to serve, we do not really know how to answer such a call. Because when someone offers me to serve as a deacon, for example, do I have such gift? Did you find something in the Bible like deacon's gift? I, I am not finding. Or, for example, audiovisual team gift. Did you find something like that in the Bible? No. There is not such a gift as a gift of deacon. But you might have personal traits that will make great deacon out of you. Or audiovisual community service. The say, uh, this is important, and I will not stop saying it over and over, my friends, over and over, over again. We have already received gifts when we were baptized in water and spirit. Uh, uh, in, water, in water and spirit. And a better question to ask is it if I cultivate and grow in the gifts or not. What I would like to say is that we should not be ants of God's gift. We should not be ants of God's gifts. Us. But it does not end with us. We are mean to be channels through which the blessing, blessings will flow to others. This is a one aspect from, from verse 10. And another aspect that we must pay attention to in this verse that Peter is asking us to serve one another as as how? As what? Stewards. Stewards, thank you. God's right grace. Here, is, here he is telling that we are stewards. And interesting, he is using the word economos. The really familiar word, yeah? Word for, for most of us. And the meaning, or trans, like meaning of that word is manager, or someone who is managing household business, uh, worker. And he is telling that God makes us managers. My friends, God makes us managers. And question, managers of what? You will ask me, yes? But we have answer in our Bible verse. We have answer. He, and here is where is the best news we have for today. We are manager of God's grace. You can, you, you can imagine these words. We are managers of God's grace. God puts me and you to manage his grace. Is not this is the biggest responsibility that God put on us? Moreover, Peter is showing the vari variation of God's grace. And 
interesting, interestingly, when the words gift are used in this text, and I will show you on, on the screen, a Greek word charisma are, is used. And the root of this word is charis, and which is the root of grace. And now we need to connect this, uh, these two words or how Peter is playing with these words, yes? The gifts that we have are for the poor to show God's grace to this world. God's grace is varied in its manifestation. And at the same time, God's grace is manifested when we serve with our gifts. When we sing, when we open doors, do the bulletin job or newspapers, work in the kitchen, all of these are examples of God's grace. Can you imagine this responsibility that we have? Peter is reminding us that the time is coming to an end. And as a saved believers, you must show, share this grace with others. So, we have four lessons that we have learned today. First, it is a state of our, what? Mind and our wisdom in every day. Second, the foundation of everything is what? Love. Third, the practice of love by caring for them for others and being hospitable towards them. Fourth, all of us, no exceptions, were put as the managers in Christ's church. I would like to repeat this again. All of us, no exceptions, not just pastor or board members, all of us, no exception, were put as the managers in God's church. We were given the right kind of instruments of, or gifts to show God's grace. Yeah. Through our gifts, my friends, we will show God's grace. This is the reason why I cannot say this is in my gift. I will use just for my family. Or for example, I don't know what I have. What kind of gift, gifts I have? We have responsibility. So the question to each one of, uh, one of you is this. Do you believe the reality of these words? Do you realize that these words are towards each one of you without exceptions? Young kids... Elderly people, for all of us. And now, I would like to return to our beginning. And question what I have for now, who we are? We are participants or we spectators? We can come or we continue to be spectators. We have the right kind of clothes. This is a my Sabbath clothes. Yes? We have 3BN, for example. We have Bible. We even have, we even given our tithe. Tithes. Somewhat, we are even part of the process. With, we can even empathize or, uh, info, uh, empathize or and support ministry through, some, through sitting. But we are not participants. We are not action in the process. We do not practice the faith. We are not growing spiritual muscles. In the church of God, my friends, there should not be spectators who do not serve, who are not participating, and who do not sacrifice themselves to the serve, to the serve as the Lord. We are given to each other to serve. And we are put as a managers. Each one of us is put to manage God's grace for this community. 
You know, when I look at the game on TV, I like soccer. I, don't know, I know that nobody <laughs> from this community likes <laughs> soccer. But sometimes when I, when I look, when I watch some video game, the game, yes, like Liga Champions or something, and I really good understand tactics. I really good understand what kind of players must be on the field. I know this player failed. This was wrong. It was a mistake by manager. It was wrong players on the field. I know. Ah, I am able to analyze. I am able to, cr to have this criticism, yes? I mean, have some debates with my screen. I try to say, hey, oh, coach, what are you doing, my friend? But what is the point of my criticism? I'm personal, personally, I'm not able to play. Yes? Spectators cannot spiritually grow. He can analyze and criticize, but cannot grow. God wants us to grow spiritually. And for that, we need to do our part and serve. If you do not realize, realize our responsibility and do not use the opportunity to serve each other, then we are just spending our time nicely. However, God wants each mindset to be set on serving others and cultivating our gifts. May God, my friends, bless each one of us to rethink our service at church and change our status from spectators to participators. Amen? Amen. Now I would like to pray with you. But before I will, I will start my prayer, I would like to call on Haladin and uh, Jaden, and they will help me to share questionaries. And I would like, when I ask you, please take that and think, pray with God. And our brother Andy, he will sing a song before we will pray together.
for your help. And if you need fans, let us know. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, our Lord, our almighty God, we praise you today and we celebrate your grace that we have. You blessed us to be here. You blessed us to have guests, to have new friends. You blessed us as a community to be family. And you call us today to serve for each other, to understand our gifts that we received by your grace. My dear Lord, bless our church, bless our community, our Shelton. You know, how many people they are seeking for your love, for your word. How many people need your, your help, your, your, your word, your support from us. But here, we need to be organized. We need to understand responsibility that we have. And today I ask you, please bless each one of us. Bless us. Baptize us with the Holy Spirit. Touch our heart. Do not be part just spectators, but be participants and love. We pray in Jesus' name, in your holy name.